How's it going party people, Skydubs here, back again with another legit ranking. Today, for the 10th anniversary of Skylanders, I decided to rank all 182 levels from all console and 3DS games. We have 26 levels from SSA and 19 on the 3DS, 16 from Giants and 16 on the 3DS. Swap Force brings us another 14 levels and 18 on the 3DS. We have 22 from Trap Team and 13 on the 3DS version. And we have 13 from Superchargers and 25 from Imaginators, leading us to a total of 182 levels. And just so we're clear, I'm not counting hub areas, heroic challenges, those arena levels, arena battles, bonus missions, certain boss fights, doom challenges, villain boot camps, expansion packs and trap team on the 3DS because they aren't actual levels, race tracks and those areas in imaginators like the Rat Kingdom aren't included either. I hope you got all of that because we have no time to waste, as I would like to keep this video a normal length which is probably impossible, but without further ado, at number 182, the worst Skylanders level ever is Ride Apocalypse Demo Darby. I think you can understand why this is this slow, I hate vehicle combat, so a level based around it sucks. And this is barely even a level, it's more of an arena battle, though it does have some parts where you aren't in vehicles, but they are filled with Skystone games, so yeah, this level is horrible. Another horrible level is Dream Sheep's Dominion. This level is pretty boring and I'm not a fan of the light gimmick and there is a ton of bomb rolling and you think for the final level they'd make the villain good, but nah, the villain sucks, just like all of the other villains do in this game. But the biggest problem are the flying parts. Not only is flying boring, but this level requires you to do free flying sections without taking damage. That is a problem because there are three of them, one of them is right at the end of the level, the dragon's hitbox sucks, on the first flight your fireballs are automatically aimed at the sheep, but for some reason they aren't on the second and the third one, and to top it off, there is a glitch at the end of the second flight where you get hit by absolutely nothing and I had to go to the second page of Google just to find out that there is an invisible ship there so you have to shoot it and you can do it only if you shoot there. I hate this level. Next up it's Rocky Gate. This level is so boring and it looks the same as the previous level which is lazy, there are these things that bounce you up but serve no purpose at all and are never seen again, the villain fight sucks as always, and there is a turret at the end, and that's horrible as well. The worst level from Swap Force is Twisty Tunnels. This is the third desert level in a row and at this point I am sick of them. The swap zones suck like in every other level, I'm not a fan of these crystal areas, it's just a bunch of electrifying things and it's a very long level and it has a turret section which is one of the worst ones in the franchise. Honestly the only thing I like about this level is that the fire viper shows up a couple of times. One of the most disappointing levels is Dragon Temple. This is one of the rare Imaginators levels that try something, but it's just so boring. Like, it's way too long, it has a bunch of those bridge puzzles, Doomlanders are always horrible, flying is bad, this sheep shooting enemy is one of the most annoying enemies ever, and the dividing path thing wouldn't be that bad if the paths didn't suck. The only good one is the fighting one, the other ones are either just playing the bad version of Skystones or pushing blocks. Underholes is just bad. This is the beginning of Trap Team on the DS and this is definitely the shortest level. It's so short that it's kinda pathetic. The villain is pretty lame as well and I have nothing else to say. That's how short it is.
Another obvious level is Light Realm. These two orbs never shut up and the level is pretty similar to Sunscraper Spire except it's filled with these light beam puzzles and there is nothing else. The only good thing about the level is that they bring back the core of light at the end, though it doesn't look as good as it used to but at least it's something. Hot Springs Village is yet another horrible level from Trap Team. The villain fight is horrible again, but surprisingly ice physics are not the main problem of this level. It's the big snowballs that are terrible. Just like Dream Ship's Dominion, this wouldn't be a huge problem if it wasn't for the fact that you can't get hit by canyon logs, which are coincidentally placed on the snowball sections. And another thing is that you control the ball by moving the 3DS, not with the analog stick, which makes it 10 times harder to control and avoid these canyon logs. The next one is Land of the Undead. My god, I hate this level. Everything is so grey and it isn't even really Land of the Undead, it's more of a prison with skeleton enemies. And I don't like the change in gravity thing, the sky vehicle part is not fun and way too long, the sea one is horrible and the land one is okay but Count Moneybon is such a bad boss and is such a bad way to end an already bad level. Another level I hate is Phantasm Forest. The level is so long and this fire shooting thing suck, these explosive barrels suck, these shooting trolls suck and instead of bad vehicle sections, we have the worst turret sections in the entire franchise and there are three of them and the chaos fight is even worse than the Count Moneybone one. The only reason this is higher is because the graphics here are amazing. Continuing with Swap Force, we have Bony Islands. This is another insanely long and boring level and the highlight of it is probably the second worst turret section in the franchise. I swear to god the Swap Force turrets are harder than the actual enemies. Apart from that, the only interesting thing is when you get separated from the turret but it's nothing special really. The next one is Shellman Shores. The only good thing about this level is that Blobbers makes an appearance and we see his house. Other than that it's pretty lackluster like it has a bunch of rail grinds, one of the most annoying enemies, some confusing parts like why does this guy die for no reason and yet another bad Doomlander boss to end off the level. The worst level from Spire's Adventure is Empire of Ice. This is also the worst expansion pack. Now I will admit, I love the music here but there is really nothing special about this level. And then you have these ice mazes, a horrible elemental gate and of course the infamous boss fight against a wall. Another bad Spire's Adventure level is Cadaverous Crypt. This one is just kinda boring and the level design is almost identical to crawling catacombs but it's done much worse. Plus it has two bad elemental gates this time and a lot of canyons for some reason. Next up we have Fizzland. Out of all the switching worlds levels this is by far the worst one. It's just not done that well here and vacuuming and sorting those red and blue things is bad and I hate these fire bottle things and we have another bad Doomlander fight to end the level. The worst level from Giants is Secret Vault of Secrets. The main problem in this level is that it has three robot sections and they last for minutes which is way too much and I was never a fan of trying to avoid these lasers and I was never a fan of block puzzles either. However, this level has such a great ending to it which is also slightly depressing at the same time. Sky Fortress is another bad Imaginators level. This level is too long and kinda bland and pretty boring, like honestly there is nothing interesting here. 
apart from this weird wrecking ball thing to destroy mines which sucks and there is this part where we shoot the rocket for no reason and of course how could I forget another bad Doomlander fight the worst level from trap team is the golden desert this level has a lot of issues not only is it completely broken and way too long but it has the worst quest in the game areas that lead to absolutely nothing bad elemental gates Kali gets turned to gold and that is immediately resolved for some reason and these parts where you shoot to chompy worm are bad as well however the arena battle is great so it's not all horrible a level with similar issues is future of skylands i'm never really a huge fan of future levels they're all kind of the same the gray color is everywhere and you have a bunch of flying cars very original also there are some bad parts like this short part that serves no purpose or these flying things where nothing happens or this shooting part which is just bad and you have blastertron who is another insanely annoying enemy but just like the golden desert this level is saved by the amazing wolfgang boss battle at the end of the level otherwise it would be a catastrophe the next level is shipwreck island yet another swap force level that goes on for too long and I don't know, the tornado teleportation puzzles that are throughout the entire level, they aren't that great and these things are back. And the Shape Mage boss is basically just fighting enemies and then dodging mines, which is pretty underwhelming, especially compared to the Chompy Mage boss battles. We are back in Spyrus Adventure with Battlefield. Once again, this level is almost identical to the Goo Factory, and again, it's done so much worse. We have another bad elemental gate, bomb rolling, and another atrocious boss fight against the tank. Another bad giants level is the Oracle. I know people like this one, and yeah, it's cool that the Oracle knows different Skylanders, but I don't like the dividing paths that much, especially since I need to replay the level another 4 times to get all the stuff. And some areas are cool, but most of the areas are very boring and empty, and that makes replaying this level even more annoying. Back in Spurs Adventure, we have Lava Lakes Railway. This level has some potential, but the first part of it is literally the same as Moloch in Mine. Like, there is no difference. The second part is a new area, but it's just the longest pushing block puzzle in the game. And the third area... God damn, it's amazing! Until you get to the boss battle and realize you are fighting the same boss for the fourth time. I feel like if the entire level was like the final area, it would be much higher, but since it isn't, it's just another bad level. Another bad trap team level is Know It All Island. The graphics here are pretty great, but it's just a regular jungle level and I hate how you don't even need to talk to the stone heads. And there is another bad quest, ball rolling, boring villains, turrets and another horrible boss fight against Slobber Trap. The last trap team level for a while is Rainfish Riviera. The theme of the level is great and the Leviathan returns, but those are the only good things about the level because we have two terrible quests, this level introduces fucking brawlers and bridge puzzles and this thing where you pick things up and throw them in the sea which sucks but at least you can throw mags in the sea so at least you have that another bad imaginators level is abandoned amusement park the amusement park is great and it seems like the level is about to end when we realize that we don't have candles which is cool but i would have preferred if it actually ended here also, I don't understand why eels are in an amusement park, but I don't really care. What I do care about though, is how long this level is. 
and this fucking cake mission. I think almost everyone can agree that this is stupid. And of course, the Doomlander fight. But it isn't just bad this time, it's actually pretty annoying as well. Continuing with Imaginators, we have Golden Arcade. Another level that takes an eternity to finish. And I like the arcade theme, but the minigames suck. The Sprocket one sucks, this is the worst version of Sky Stones, and we have to play them twice. The Shooting Ducks also sucks. We have Rail Grinds, a really bad ending where we free the brain and he just goes to chaos for some reason. And of course, another bad Doomlander fight. Though I will say this is one of the better ones, because I like that we fight him in a game, but it's still not great. We have another realm and it's the tech realm. It's not horrible, but the goal here is to make a toy out of free body parts and then do this mini game. Yeah, it's not great. Maybe if making the toy was more interesting, it would probably be higher, but it's anyways not even connected to the tech element. It's honestly such a weird level. Dark Realm is another pretty disappointing realm. There is not much to say about this one as nothing really happens apart from the fact that the entire level is just ball rolling. But hey, at least it's in the dark, you know, because it's the Dark Realm. The Air Realm is basically just a longer version of the Air Elemental Gates. Which isn't great because most of them suck as they are full of waiting on balloons. The only thing that's different is the fog. But then again that is also seen in the Cloud Kingdom and I'm not the biggest fan of how the fog works. So yeah, this level is pretty lame. The worst level from Giants on the 3DS is the Tar Pits. A big problem SSA and Giants on the DS have is that there are multiple levels that have the same theme, making them very forgettable, and this level is the prime example of that. It looks the same as the other two sand levels and does the least to stand out. The only thing different on this level is the sand slide, but the rest is pretty much the same and it's pretty bad. And the same goes for the Windy Dunes. This level is just slightly better than the Tar Pits because of some really fun platforming. Apart from that though, it's just the same desert level with absolutely nothing special added. We now have the worst level from Spyrus Adventure on the 3DS with Dream Gardens. We rescue the first seeker here and there is some fun platforming but it has the same theme as the first level of this game and it's way too short to be anywhere higher on this list. The worst ice level from Spires Adventure is Glacial Slopes. I don't know, this one is just kinda boring and these ice platforms are way too slippery and once again this level is very similar to the previous one. The only difference is that the sky is dark and there is an ice slide, but it's still not great. Continuing with Spire's Adventure, we have Cinder Stream Pass. Again, I know that I'm repeating myself, but what can I say? This level is almost identical to the other two cave levels in Spire's Adventure. And the only reason it's this high is because at the end of the day, the cave design is still great, even though it's just a blatant copy. We are back in Giants with Lost and Found. This one isn't that much of a copy, it's just that it's one of the most forgettable levels on this list. It's just a basic jungle theme, and the only thing I like is the volcano at the end, but that fight lasts for like 20 seconds. The rest of the level is honestly filled with Nothing, there is nothing here, nothing bad, but nothing good. The Wing Warrens is another lackluster 3DS level. Now this is basically Dragon Speak on the DS and I don't really mind that, but it's so much worse than the actual Dragon Speak. And the only cool thing about the level is that we get the Vathic boss fight finally, 
but you just shoot vases and sheep at him and it's really disappointing that he never got a good boss fight. At number 145 we have Aurora Peak. Again, there is really not much to say about this as it's the same as Glacial Slopes and the only things it adds are the skybox which actually looks really good and these purple meteors which are great as well but that's about it for this one, there is really nothing else. The last game we haven't talked about is Swap Force on the 3DS and now we have Twilight Fortress. This is the third Crystal Cave themed level which obviously sucks but the cool thing about it is that there is a giant robot worm which constantly shows up during the level and is also an obstacle sometimes. But then again that also happens on the level before this one and the way we kill it is very underwhelming which is a shame. The last 3DS level for now is Overgrowth. Even though it isn't a huge compliment, this level does the most to stand out out of these previous ones as it adds a couple of neat things to the factory but then again this is the third swamp level in a row and the second factory level in a row and I do like the factory because it reminds me of Drill X's big rig but this is just another level that feels really lazy. We are returning to the realms with Earth Realm. This one is filled with the mining stuff from Spyrus Adventure and something everybody loves, a bunch of ball rolling, yay. And now we have the Water Realm. This one is pretty bland with the only memorable things being those fountain puzzles and they are pretty bad but at least it's more creative than most of the other realms. We are finally back in Spire's adventure with Malkin Mine. This one is way too short for a level this far into the game. I mean 90% of the DS levels are longer and those are pretty short as well. Apart from that the mine looks decent but I don't like the mining thing and then we have these boring canyon and pushing block puzzles but at least we see blobbers again so that's something. Continuing with Spire's adventure we have Sky Schooner Docks. We meet Persephone here which is cool and even though this is such a nostalgic level to me there is still that annoying earth gate and there are three turrets and they suck as always. Now we have another desert level in Iron Jaw Gulch. You already know I'm not a fan of deserts so this level was obviously gonna be low but it's just so bland and boring. It's got those music puzzles which are okay I guess and there is an overload of mines which is annoying but there is this part which is pretty cool but it lasts for like a minute or two and then that's it we are back to the desert yay yeah overall it's just a mediocre level we are returning to giants with glacier gully the music here slaps and even though this level introduces us to icons like machine ghost and noodles and has one of the best elemental gates it's just filled with simple but boring light beam puzzles and ice physics are just unbearable, especially in that ice ball thing. We are back in superchargers with the bandit train. Even though this is one of the rare superchargers levels without the vehicle, it's just boring. I always love hijacking trains in games, it's really fun but every single area in the train looks the same and the only ones that are different are the ones in the dark and you can barely see what's happening in them and the 2D areas are pretty bad as well and not to mention that we have another lackluster boss at the end of this level. Next up we have Sleep Dragon Slayer. The goal of this level is to get the sleep dragon snack so he can take us to the final level and it's just so boring and the only things that stand out are another weak villain fight and these book puzzles that don't even work properly honestly this sucks. At number 134 we have winter keep. 
Even though this level has a giant whirlwind statue, I still don't like it that much. It's long and it's the second snow level in a row, but it tries to be different by adding two things. Snow digging and these weird shooting sections and spoiler alert, they both suck. Another thing is we are forced to use snowmen's bodies as bullets, which is sad cause the snowmen are really cool. And one last thing, there's this weird part that has no point at all and I don't understand it at all. I'm usually a fan of forest levels, but Falling Forest just isn't that great. Now don't get me wrong, I like that we get to stop the destruction of a forest, but let's be real here, this is just a darker version of Treetop's Terrace, but with a really bad boss fight at the end of the level, and I just feel like I cannot put it any higher than this, even though it's not a horrible level. Now we have the ending level in Superchargers, the Sky Eater. This is a pretty decent level with a great chaos boss fight and vehicles aren't that bad either. I like the water one but while the baby hydra part is a cool idea, it's a pretty bad boss fight. The air star is okay and so is the land one but my biggest problem with this level is the darkness boss fight. This is by far the hardest boss fight in the franchise. Anyone who says trap team chaos is the hardest has never play this on nightmare mode. Every time I try to fight it, I die over 10 times at least and that wouldn't be a huge problem if this wasn't one of the worst boss fights I have ever played, especially since this is apparently our biggest fight as a portal master. Now don't get me wrong, I love the way it starts with the ending screen and supercharged in love playing in the background and then this monster comes out of nowhere, but you have two sections, one inside the rift and one outside. The second one looks pretty cool, but I have no idea how to avoid these flying things and the rift isn't much better as the only way to hit the darkness is by going through rings multiple times in a row and if you miss one you have to do the ring chain all over again i honestly hate this fight it's so bad that i didn't even bother to finish it for this video and that says a lot another disappointing ending level is the ultimate weapon I don't like this level a lot as there are a lot of boring puzzles and chaos constantly interrupts you and even though it's not as bad as the other quests, the things you do with Golden Queen are not that great unless you want to upgrade Skylanders. So you may be wondering why is this level this high then? Well it's because of the chaos boss fight, but it's not just any chaos boss fight, it's the best chaos boss fight and one of the best boss fights in Skylanders. Plus, once we beat him, we get to play as him, and he's so overpowered that it should be illegal. Monastery of Waking is up next. Trap Team has three levels at the end of the second, third and fourth world that end with a boss fight and this is the worst one. The level design here is surprisingly decent but this is the second dream ship boss fight and it's identical to the one we fought in the temple of waking which sucks but it also does a lot of other things wrong like another bad villain fight, a bunch of these canyon things and of course bomb rolling. One of the most overrated levels is Sky Highlands. This level is just okay. The theme of the air war is cool. I like the great Hawk Mongas. And details like ships constantly flying around the level and some ships crashing into the ground so the enemies can attack us, they are great. But then again the level starts with a really long shooting section and it's just bad, especially compared to the Autogyro adventure which utilizes the flying thing much better. And after that you still have another free turrets, yeah, this is really nothing special. 
I've always felt like Pirate Seas had a lot of potential, but it wasn't fulfilled. I love pirate themed levels and this one is pretty fun, but it's completely ruined by the card games. They are way too easy, last for too long and you have to play them like 8 times. And then you think you're finally done with the level when Jess manages to get trapped and now you have to destroy a pirate castle. And this part sucks as well. And once you're done with that, you still have to play one more card game instead of just fighting Dreadbeard, which is a huge missed opportunity in my opinion. With Royal Rooftops, we have already passed the halfway point of Trap Team. The design of the palace is great and it's a pretty decent level, plus I like that part at the end where you go pretty fast, but we have another bad villain. Though this is probably my favorite one and that doesn't say much and as we all know Trap Team loves to add horrible gimmicks and we have another one here with free flying carpet sections that suck and again you can't get hit so good luck restarting this level and this may be just my version but out of all 182 levels this is the only one that crashed and it happened 3 times and one of those crashes was right at the end. One of the most infamous levels in the franchise is Lost Imaginite Mines. I know people will think I am biased because of the fact that this level costs $300 but if I was looking at that, this level would be in the worst stand for sure and I just feel like it's nothing special, like I like the outside area, I think it's pretty cool and I love the part that Blobbers plays here but as soon as we enter the ancient mines this level goes downhill. They tried to copy the magnet thing from the secret vault of ancients but it's not that great and also this looks exactly like the first level of the game which makes it even less impressive and on top of that you have this ball magnet gimmick which would be fine I guess if the bomb didn't kill you. What a way to make an already bad gimmick even worse and then we have a pretty mediocre boss to end a pretty mediocre level. We are back in Swap Force with Mudwater Hollow. I really love the swamp theme of this level and the ending is pretty good but it's full of these fishing mini games and my god these raft sections are horrible. I don't mind the guy that talks that much but it's really hard to avoid these mines and there is also three of them throughout the level. One is bad enough, three is just terrible. Next up we have yet another Imaginators level, Enchanted Elven Forest. This is a pretty similar level to Phantasm Forest but it's definitely much better. Once again we have the fire and we have to put it out and even though this level is way too long, most of it is actually fun until the end where we have those damn turrets again, a lot of rail grinds and another bad boss fight with an even worse name. Honestly, Toys for Bob should have just hired me, I make much better names. We are already back in Swap Force with Chaos's Fortress. I think sneaking into Chaos's Fortress is a really cool idea in concept but it's executed horribly because the way we sneak in is by getting dressed as sheep which makes the security as useless as the chase variants are. What a great security system Mr. Biggest Villain in Skylands. And then this level introduces one of the most annoying NPCs ever in Softball. And honestly the only thing I like is that it's really challenging, but apart from that it's pretty lame. I have really mixed feelings about Mystic Mill. The level design is good and I like that we are helping Mabus fight the Evilikins and we finally get a use out of a villain because only Shrednot can access certain areas which should have happened way more in this game but this level just has too many flaws. It starts with this weird part on a ship and then another turret section, another boring quest and we have a bad boss fight against Krankenstein. Only 4 realms are left and one of them is Undead Realm. There are a couple of problems here, first of all this looks exactly like the undead gates from Swap Force and kinda like the oracle, the level changes when you replay it 
And I think it's not as bad as it is in the Oracle, because this level is really short, so it kinda evens out with the whole level changing, but it's still not great. We are back in Giants after quite some time with Sand Trap. This is the best desert level in this game, but it's far from being good as most of the level is pretty bland and the only part I like is that part at the end, but even that isn't anything great. There are many pirate levels on the 3DS, but Daring Rescue is the worst one. The goal here is to rescue Flynn, and I actually think this is a good level, but the reason it's this slow is that this is a straight up copy from Windjammer Bay, which already took a lot of elements from Pirate Seas. But even with that, I still think it's better than the actual Pirate Seas, so that's kinda ironic. We have the second beginning level in a row in Towerside Fields. This is the first level in Spire's Adventure on the DS and it's just average, but we meet Hector who is a great main villain and I feel like he does a pretty good job for an introduction level and even though it really isn't anything amazing, I still kinda enjoy it. Next up we have the Lair of Chaos. This is just a B-Tech Lair of Chaos copy, they didn't even bother to change the name. And I feel like even though the graphics are better, I prefer the darker style in Spire's Adventure. Not to mention that this is by far the shortest final level, it's full of light beam puzzles and these things that slow you down for no reason. And you have this weird game show which just makes this whole level feel like a joke. We have only talked about one Swap Force level so far, but that's about to change because next up it's Shimmer Shard Shire. This is the first crystal level in the game and the crystal levels are the weakest by far. I honestly prefer the first half of this level as the second half is pretty boring and everything is grey and one thing I love in this game is how much better the swap zones are than in the console version. But I don't like the rocket and the bounce zones and it just so happens that this level has a rocket zone. Which isn't bad, but it's a downgrade from the other 6 swap zones which are all really fun. The same goes for Crystal Caverns. Here we continue where we left off at the end of the previous level and it's pretty much the same thing. And it's also similar to the cave levels from Spire's Adventure. But the thing that puts this level this high is the Robot Worm. He shows up multiple times in the level and is basically an obstacle, which is great. Though I wish we got a boss fight, but I honestly don't care that much. The third Swap Force level in a row is Tower of Time. As I've already said, I don't mind DS levels copying console levels as long as they do it better. And this one is a huge downgrade from the actual Tower of Time. Like, it's not bad, but the time stopping gimmick is nowhere near as fun as it is in the console version, and we don't even get to fight Clock. He just gives up after you beat like 5 enemies, which is really disappointing. It's time to return to Spire's adventure with Perilous Pastures. The goal here is to rescue Kali, and the only memorable things apart from that short turret section at the end are honestly elemental gates. The tech one is really fun and really nostalgic to me, the water one is just pushing block puzzles, and one thing that we never see again is a gate that doesn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea why they did this, and I kinda like it, but it's also pretty much impossible to find without googling, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. Next up we have Snowblind Hills. This is the best ice level in this game. It's basically a better version of Glacial Slopes, Aurora's Peak, and even Empire of Ice, but because of that it shares the same problems, which is the ice physics. They are way too slippery and annoying, which is something you don't really want in a level full of ice areas. Continuing with Spire's Adventure, we have Lava Flow Grotto. Even though it's pretty similar to the previous two levels, I feel like it does enough to stand out and the addition of lava in the background is a great choice. And as I've already said, the design of the cave and platforming is great across all three cave levels in this game, so this is a pretty decent one. We have another realm now and it's the Magic Realm. 
I'm still not sure how I feel about this one as the area here is just the magic elemental gates from previous games but the main gimmick is this maze and while it's not that interesting it may be the hardest puzzle in this franchise. You will easily get confused and lost here as it's a really challenging puzzle and challenging puzzles is something we don't see often in Skylanders but I still feel like it's just an average level and nothing outstanding. Next up we have Waterwalk Way. This is the weakest jungle level and much like the cave levels, the platforming and level design in this world is top notch and really fun. And even though there are some additions like platforming across water on lily pads, the main problem here is that it's pretty similar to the previous level but it's nowhere near as good as it's missing a very important thing from that level which I will talk about later. But even though it's not even in the top half on this list, I still really like this level. We haven't talked about giants in a while, but that changes with Junkyard Isles. I think this is another decent level which brings back Auric and Persephone and this is the first time we explore Flynn's iconic ship. And these are all great things, but there is still nothing that interesting in this level and this is a smaller issue I have but I have to mention it because this one also introduces us to Bert who you need to beat in Skystones like 50 times to get all Skystones which is not fun at all. The Lost City of Arcus is one of the weaker Archean levels. I have to clarify something, even though this level isn't ranked that well, I still absolutely love the Archean themed levels but the reason it's this low is because it's almost identical to Autogyra Adventure. You know, I like the theme, but we have already seen it before this one, and then we see it in the level right after this, which I will talk about later. But I do have to say, this level on Nightmare Mode is absolutely brutal, and I love it. Though the time challenge is impossible without using items or glitches, but I don't really think that's important at all. Battle Brawl Island is one of the weirder levels. This is the only superchargers level other than the bandit train that doesn't have any vehicle sections and it's a decent one. We meet Shellshock once again and there are three bosses. Brimstone and Boulders is a good boss fight while Captain Bristlestash is a bad boss fight. But the main highlight is Spell Slamzer who has a really fun boss fight. I especially love the part where he just takes you out of the arena to this random place and if we stayed here longer this level would be a lot higher but since we only stay here for like a minute and this is barely even a level I think it would be unfair for it to place higher than this. We are almost done with realms because the next level is the fire realm. This is another short realm but the theme is to stop a volcano from erupting and since I'm a volcano enthusiast I enjoy it. What I don't enjoy though is this freezing mechanic. It's not that bad at first but when you have to freeze those platforms it gets really annoying which is the reason this level isn't in the top 100. Another good introduction level is time of the giants. I think this level is pretty underrated as just because it's short doesn't mean it's bad as it's fun and we get introduced to giant's gimmicks which is great. Though again it's disappointing that we don't fight Conquertron and instead just destroy his platform but I don't really care that much. And one small thing that I don't understand is we meet this cool NPC Guy Gantus who shows us a couple of things and then disappears and is for some reason never seen again. That's kinda sad honestly. The second swamp level from Giants is Murky Waters. I already said I like swamp levels and I feel the same about this one. It's a pretty fun level with decent platforming and we meet a giant turtle at the end and my only complaint is that the soundtrack from Glacier Gully just doesn't fit a swamp level that much. Though this is just my opinion and it doesn't really matter that much at the end. I just feel like they could have chosen better music for this level. We are back in Trap Team with Operation Troll Rocket Steel. Famous for being Crash the Skylands favorite level, it just doesn't live up to its hype in my opinion. It just feels like a huge copy of Mystic Mill with the whole helping Mabus thing and even some reoccurring elements from that level and the only reason it's higher 
is because they do really like the arena battle, but apart from that it's just full of puzzle locks and areas that don't lead to anything, and it's just kinda boring. Just missing out on the top 100 we have Sacred Town. There isn't a lot to say about this one, it's pretty fun and the desert temple theme is solid but I cannot put it in the top 100 because of another bad villain fight, which as you may tell by now, happens on every single level of this game. Since we are now about to enter the top 100 levels and we are almost halfway through the ranking, I thought it would be a good time to take a break and show you something. We are starting the top 100 off with Shipwreck Island on the 3DS. Now this is what I call an improvement on the original level. The teleporting tornadoes are much more tolerable here as there aren't that many of them and all the pushing block puzzles are gone, which is great. But what lets this level down is the boss fight, which consists of you shooting two canyons at the giant sheep and that's it. Wow. I honestly never realized how many bad boss fights were in Skylanders until I started making this video, but yeah, let's just continue. Now we have a couple of levels in Trap Team and the first one is Hugo's Nightmare. As you can tell by the name, we get to explore Hugo's Nightmare and it's full of sheep, which is a good idea, especially those times when sheep eat you and those discombobulated rooms, though I don't like the sheep moving gimmick and as always we have a bad villain fight to end the level, which is disappointing as this is one of the more creative levels in this game, but I still kinda enjoy it. Next up we have another trap team level and it's Temple of Waking. I have already said that there are three levels that have the dream sheep fight in trap team and this is the first one and while the villain sucks as always I can look past that as it's not the main boss fight of the level and the dream sheep fight is pretty good as well, though this is the third desert temple level in a row but at least they add some lava in the background for one part so I am satisfied. And next up we have Palace of Waking. Yeah, as you can tell this is the last of the three waking levels so that means that we are fighting the same boss for the third time, which is really annoying but at least it has a new attack added and some part of the floor disappears but it's not enough. And as for the level itself, it's actually pretty fun as we get to avoid the sleep dragon's fireballs during the level and I love the palace theme here so it's pretty decent at the end of the day. The worst expansion pack from Trap Team is Sunscraper Spire. This was the introduction to the light element and it was pretty disappointing as the level is just kinda boring and full of light beam puzzles and even the bombs don't work properly for some reason. I mean look at this. However, the ending of the level is amazing as Max turns out to be Luminous and then we fight Luminous, which is a pretty fun boss fight but the rest of the level is not that great. And the best realm in Skylanders Imaginators goes to the life realm. This is a simple level, the same as the rest of the realms but I enjoy this one the most. I don't have a certain reason why, I just do but it's nowhere near perfection as we have to shoot rats from canyons and I feel like this wasn't necessary at all, but I still think it's a fine level. Continuing with Imaginators, up next is the beginning level of the game, Cradle of Creation. As I've already mentioned, this is a pretty similar level to Lost Imaginate Mines and again, the outside area is good and the inside area isn't. The maze is bad and there is a random disc collecting area and I don't know why but there are no Archeans here, but that's a minor thing as I'm glad to say that this is probably the only good Doomlander fight and it still does the job for a beginning level which is all that matters. Another decent introduction level is the Rift of Skylands. This level shows us just how good the story is gonna be in Superchargers but apart from the story the gameplay is decent and as for the vehicles they aren't bad but they aren't good either and I feel like there is not enough gameplay with Skylanders as most of this level is in vehicles and lastly one minor thing is that there is a James Bond reference for no reason and I love it. 
We have returned to Swap Force after quite some time with Frostfest Mountains. You won't believe this, but this is a Swap Force level that isn't long. Its length is actually great, and I love the cold and dark weather here, and the villages look great when lit up. But this is the third snow level in a row, and who thought these minigames are a good idea? Honestly, they're all dreadful. We are already back in Trap Team because the next level is Lair of the Golden Queen. First I want to talk about the things I dislike. This is one of the worst quests in the game, there are multiple light beam puzzles, this sucks and I am not a fan of the security thing. And as for positives, well there is a cool secret area and there is an NPC called Nut. And just like the ultimate weapon, this level has one of the best bosses in Skylanders in Golden Queen. Though it's pretty broken, but I still love it. The first tech level in Spire's Adventure is Troll Warehouse. We have to get the golden gear, but there is a minefield in front of it, so we have to find map pieces and it's pretty fun. Though I don't like that there is an overload of lock puzzles. But, Snuckles explodes, so that's all that I can ask for. We have reached the top 5 of Swap Force, and the first one is Cascade Glade. I consider this the only simple level in Swap Force, but it's a fun one. The graphics are good, and I love those cave areas, but even though I like it, I feel like it's just a decent level instead of anything great. The next level on this list is Sunny Harbor. This is one of the highlights of the game, because it's a really fun level with solid level design. It would be slightly higher if it wasn't for another bad villain fight, but being in the top half is not bad at all. Next up, we have a pretty iconic adventure pack in Dragon's Peak. I think a lot of people will be surprised that this level isn't a lot higher, but I just don't think it's anything amazing, like, the level is pretty fun, but even though I enjoy it, I absolutely hate these flying sections and there are like 10 of them and I feel like they could have been done much better or they just didn't need to exist at all and I don't know why but we don't even get to fight Vathek, which sucks. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it's for the better. And a slightly better expansion pack is Griffin Park Observatory. This is the only open world level on this list and it's weird that they tried something like this in the last game in the franchise but it works pretty well. The graphics are great and both the outside area and the cave are fun. But the level is too long and slightly too complicated. It honestly took me so long to find these two goddamn areas. And there is a weird part where you have to wait for sheep to eat stuff so you can pass. But I still think this is a pretty fun experience. We now have the second Imaginators level in a row in Mushroom River. This is basically a better version of Rainfish Riviera and Mudwater Hollow, as the graphics are great and the raft sections are so much better here, as they are a lot quicker and the slow ones are actually really fun, as you have a lot of obstacles and enemies in your way. But sadly, because of the Doomlander, I can't put it any higher than this. Now we have the first level of Swap Force, Mount Cloudbreak. I love the volcano part and these honey areas are really cool as well and it introduces us to jumping and rail grinds which aren't the greatest but they are not bad by any means. Though it's slightly too long for the first level of the game but it doesn't take away from the quality of the level. Next up we have Soda Springs. This is a pretty fun introduction level, the graphics are amazing and the Soda Town is pretty cool and we get to trap our first villains here. But while we get some cool obstacles because of him, it's still really disappointing that instead of fighting the Gulper, we just poison him and that's it. And that's a shame. Now we are back to the expansion packs with the Nightmare Express. We get to explore Flynn's dream, which is pretty cool, and for some reason, 
noodles is here and I love it and as for the level it's solid and even though there is ball rolling I think it's not as bad as it is in other levels and my favorite part is when we are on the train but one thing I don't understand is why noodles isn't trappable poor noodles his boss fighting glacier gully got scrapped and he didn't even get a boss here the DS levels are back and the next one is the party town as I've already said, I don't like the rocket zones and the first half of this level isn't the greatest, but then we get to this bar with this crazy lizard and then he starts dancing as music plays and you leave the bar and the level changes completely and for the better. And also we meet this guy at the end and nobody likes him for some reason, but he's probably my favorite NPC from the 3DS games, so I like that as well. And now we have the level right after that one, which is down the river. Just like the party town, this one has a bad swap zone. But this time it's the bound zone, and yeah, it's pretty bad. But I like the boat sections, and I like the rest of the level, it's just pretty solid overall. And the last level from Trap Team on the DS is Windy Pass. Yes, we are already knocking out the game, even though we just entered the top 80, but it's not surprising as this is the worst game on this list. But as for the level, it's pretty fun and I love the level design here, but we have another bad villain fight which stops it from being slightly higher and that's about it. But now it's time to say goodbye to Trap Team the game with by far the worst set of levels in the franchise. Here's my ranking for the game, let's continue. And the last DS level for now is Bonsai Bay. I love all Japanese levels in this game, but this one is the weakest. And I still really like it, especially those inside areas and the level design is great. And my only complaint here is the bounce swap zone, but the rest of the level is fine. And now we have bringing order to chaos. This is the final level of giants after the lost city of Arcus, so we are in the same place for the third time in a row, which isn't ideal, but the level is decent and the reason it's this high is obviously that great chaos boss fight at the end of the level. A level that's slightly better is Archean Armory. The second half of this level definitely carries it to this position as it's really fun and as I said I love the Archean theme especially with the lava. But the reason it's not higher is because of that long and tedious robot section. But it's still pretty good. It's time to return to Superchargers with Monstrous Isles. Even though it slows you down, Becoming a giant is really fun and all three boss fights here are good, but you probably guessed it, the problems here are the length and the vehicles. The land one is bad, the sky star is boring and so is the sea star and this is just another superchargers level ruined by vehicles. And the last Archean level for quite some time is Quicksilver Vault. This level looks beautiful and the music is great, though I think it could have been better without all the puzzles and that life gate, but it's still one of the better Archean levels for sure. Next up it's another Spyrus adventure level, the Goo Factory. This is straight up the same as Battlefield, but much better. It's really weird that this level has a war theme, but it works really well and while I dislike the bomb rolling, it's still really fun fighting against the trolls and I like that raising flag part at the end of the level as well. One of the most creative levels on this list is Mirror of Mystery. It's similar to the Goo Factory as we have another level where the theme is the war between Mabus and trolls, but this time everything is opposite as trolls are nice and so is Chaos, while Mabus, Eon, Flynn and Persephone are all evil. And the level is pretty fun too, we get to explore the troll village, 
but it has another long turret section at the end of the level instead of getting to fight evil on. And while I love that we get to trap Chompy, it's really stupid that we don't get to trap Persephone, Flynn and evil on, and instead we get Mablobs, who fucking sucks. Another really creative level is Aerial Attack. Basically, Flynn's ship, which is the hub area, gets attacked and you have to defend it and then jump on the ship that's attacking you and you have to destroy that ship. So it feels really cool to do all of those things, but there are two turret sections and there are some of the worst turret sections, which is sad, because this level had an unreal amount of potential, but it's done dirty by the turrets. And the final Trap Team expansion pack on this list is Midnight Museum. I feel like this is one of the best looking levels in Skylanders. The purple and black colors match really well and the lighting in this level is amazing. And the level is decent with a decent but slightly confusing boss fight against Nightshade. But the reason it's not in the top 50 is the fact that Toys for Bob thought it would be a good idea to introduce an entire element with fucking pinball and my god this is one of the worst things i have ever done in skylanders it's unexplainably horrible and ruins an otherwise great level at number 69 we have secret sewers of supreme stink i really like the level design here and the sewers look as good as a sewer can look honestly plus it's got an arena battle at the end which is great as well However, I can't look past a really annoying chomp chest quest, and Peñada's quest sucks as well, but at least they bring back the singing geckos, so it's fine. The next level is the Cloud Kingdom. I mean, look at this level, this is some Greek mythology stuff, and I love it. Though I don't really like how clouds are implemented here, as I can barely see what's going on, and as for vehicles, the Air Star is decent but goes on for too long, and I really like the first half of the Water Star, but then you get to that random boss and it's pretty bad. Just like Lord Stratosphere, who is yet another bad boss battle that ruins yet another good Superchargers level. We have another Trap Team level now in Time Town. The level design here is on point and I like how there are areas only accessible to crankcase, but these mini games are not the greatest and we have another bad quest. However, something that not a lot of people mention is that it's really highly detailed. Like it looks really cool, though maybe they should have spent some time fixing bugs because this level is completely broken. Now we have yet another Superchargers level, the Vault of Ancients. This may be the best looking level in Skylanders as both the outside and inside areas look amazing and the magnet puzzles are so much better than in Lost Imaginite Mines and the Sea Star is great and so is the first part of the Land Star while the second part is bad and the Air One is horrible and it's the reason why it's not higher and the level is way too long as well and the small problem that i have are the ancients themselves like who are these people where are all the archaeans and why is this the new core of light what happened to the original one that looked so much better i have no idea but even with those issues it's still pretty solid one of the best desert levels is multiville even though it's one of the longest levels on the list, it's really solid and we get to fight Whiskers at the beginning and in the middle of the level, and it's a good boss fight, but the highlight of the level is Baron 1 Shellshock, a German crab, I guess, who you chase throughout the entire level, and apart from him being funny and a great villain, we also get a boss fight against him, and my god, this boss fight is the most overrated boss fight in Skylanders. I don't know why people like it so much, it's just really disappointing, but the rest of the level is great. And now we have another Superchargers level in Captain Clock's Chicken HQ. I already said that I like Clock, so a level around Clock is great, and also this is one of the coolest levels on the list. 
from the theme being his KFC restaurant to making things bigger and smaller and even chickens are used as cannonballs, it's just really creative. Though I'm not a huge fan of these weird chicken puzzles and as for vehicles, the Water Star is fun and the Air Star is one of the best vehicle sections. I mean we get to fight a giant cock who first chases us and then gets a gun, which is great. But sadly, it's a pretty long level, and the land vehicles are atrocious, because you have to push these chickens into holes to advance, and even the boss is like that, making it one of the worst bosses in Skylanders. And the last trap team level for a while is Monster Marsh. The theme here is that we are in a cursed swamp village full of monsters and I love it. And I like the ending as well where we wake Mabu's up and we have another great arena battle. But then again we have another bad quest, this boring and unnecessary section and oh my god the pinballs are back. But even with those issues I still love this level but it would be unfair to put it higher than this. Next up it's Darklight Crypt. This is the first level to do the switching worlds thing and it's done really well and I cannot express how cool that maze near the end is to me but sadly Oculus who is another really cool villain is also another really cool villain who has a disappointing boss fight so that kinda sucks but the rest is pretty good. And the last level for a long time is the Spellpunk Library. This level is cool in concept because playing inside a book is really great but I feel like the 2D sections aren't the greatest, both platforming and combat in 2D aren't that fun and the vehicles, I like the Sky Star, you know it's a cool reference to older gaming but it's horrible. I absolutely love the Sea Star though because we get to meet the Hydra one last time which was a great idea and I prefer that we got a chase instead of a fight and the land one is fine but the thing I love is exploring the library. It's honestly the best part of the level. Now we have another 3DS pirate level in Windjammer Bay. As you can tell this is just pirate seas on the 3DS without those annoying card games and with fun platforming and there's not much to say else about this one it's just a great level. Another short level is head hunting. I'm aware that this is just a basic jungle level but it's a good basic jungle level and the platforming is great and there are these cool cave areas and they may be the best part of the level so yeah I do really like this one. Now we have Sky Docks, the beginning level from Swap Force and it's one of the best beginning levels in the franchise and it's one of the longer ones as well. Basically the Sky Docks get attacked and now we have to save them. Yes, I know it's not the coolest team ever, I just feel like it's a really solid beginning to a really solid game. We still have a bunch of levels from Swap Force and Robot Factory is one of them. This one reminds me of Chaos's Fortress with similarities and the whole factory theme but it's honestly 10 times better. I like the speed zone as well and I've already expressed how much I love lava in levels so this is obviously my favorite part of this level. Next up we have White Haunt. This is the 3DS version of Darklight Crypt and what I like about it is that you actually have nothing from Darklight Crypt here. It's a completely new level and it's really solid with some cool areas and challenging platforming as always. The best ruins level from Giants is Through the Ruins. I think exploring this level is really fun, especially that tree area, it's just really great and the ending of the level is great as well. The only things I dislike are those slow moving platforms but they are anyways short so it doesn't matter too much. And now we have Winter Watch Keep. This is the best adventure pack from Spire's Adventure. Yes, you heard it right, this is actually the 3DS version of Empire of Ice which is really weird as it looks more like the Archean Armory and there is barely any ice here. However, because of that, there isn't an overload of those god awful ice physics so it actually makes the level better than it would have been if it was a real ice level. 
pretty weird, right? Continuing with the DS levels, we have Clockwork Castle. This is the ending level of Swap Force and it's one of the longest 3DS levels, but even though it's really long, it's really good as well as it offers some of the most challenging platforming and some actually interesting puzzles. Plus, it has more of those cool lava areas and I like levels based around clocks, so this is just a really well made level overall. The best swamp level in Giants is Stuck in the Mud. I already like swamp levels, so mix that with a really cool looking factory and you get this level and it's great. And because of the whole factory thing, it reminds me a lot of Drill X's Big Rig, which is another level I love, and it has some of the best level design in Giants, so it's just a great level. Just missing out on the top 50, it's Canyon Father. Yes, I know that this level is similar to Daring Rescue, which is similar to Vin Jammer Bay, which is similar to Pirate Seas, which is similar to Darkwater Cove, but I can't criticize it too much as it's actually a really good level as it takes the good parts from those levels and mixes them together while bringing back the flag raising thing, which I like, and the most important part is we finally get revenge on those damn turrets. They deserve to get destroyed after all the levels they have ruined. And we are starting the top 50 with flooded viaducts. This level has some solid platforming and music and look at it. I love the fact that it revolves around some kind of waterfall which makes for a great set piece for a level like this. A level that's similar is Fountain Springs. The first world in Swap Force is my favorite as all levels are really good and the same goes for this one. I love how we start off in the more natural and grassy areas and as we go further we see more signs of a factory and then right at the end we get to the factory and it's such a cool and fun level in my opinion that it wouldn't be fair if it was outside the top 50. Now we have another Swap Force level and it's the Haunted Villa. Even though I love Clockwork Castle, I feel like this would have been a better final level as it's really cool getting into the haunted villa and then going through it is even better. Even the bounce zone isn't bad and stuff like platforming on lanterns is really cool and I'm glad I didn't play this when I was younger because this is absolutely terrifying. A level that's slightly better is Western Land. As you can tell the theme here is the wild west and you know it's done really well when even I enjoy exploring a desert area and stuff like minecarts and the bar areas are just great and make the level even better. We finally get a break from the 3DS levels with Molokin Mountain. This is a pretty cool level and it's also really challenging, especially because of that arena battle at the end, but even though it's difficult, it's one of the best arena battles for sure, but my favorite parts have got to be those cave areas. I don't know exactly why, but I just really love them. Next up, it's Stormy Stronghold. This is a pretty iconic level and it's no wonder that it's iconic when it's a great level and I love how we need to first rebuild the castle and then we get to enter it and the castle is great and even though I wish we would have entered the inside of the castle as it's most of the time cooler I still think that the ending of this level is amazing so I don't care at all. And now we have an even more iconic level in Shattered Island. This is the first Skylanders level of all time and it's also the best first level in Skylanders and I know it's short but I don't mind it that much and we get introduced to everything here. NPCs, Chompies, Canyons, Elemental Gates, Bounce Pads, Skylanders and a lot of other things and the main thing I like is that it's almost perfect when it comes to introducing an entire franchise which is the most important thing in a level like this. The DS levels are back and we have a walk in the park. The name of the level is honestly horrible but the level itself is great. 
the theme park area is really cool and I wish we got an entire level in it but I don't care as the second half of the level is in another factory and I love this part as well and add some good old platforming to that and you get this great level. Another level from Giants is Ships Ahoy. We have covered a ton of pirate levels on the 3DS and this is the best one. I love the first part where you climb up this castle which looks similar to the one from Stormy Stronghold and the ending where you go from ship to ship is even better so yeah this is just a great level. And now we have the final level from Spyrus Adventure, Lair of Chaos. I think the design of this level is absolutely amazing, it looks really cool and it really gives off final level vibes, which is very important. And even though it's nothing really hard, it's one of the more challenging levels in Spyrus Adventure and challenge is something that this game is missing. Though I will say that this level is lucky that the chaos fight doesn't count because that fight absolutely sucks. The Japanese levels are back and next up it's Fireflow Valley. I've already said that these levels have some of the best level design on the 3DS and the theme here is that we have to stop a volcano from erupting which as you know is something I absolutely love and I just feel like this is such a fun level and it's really fun to explore these areas so I think a top 40 spot is pretty fair. We are back in Spyrus Adventure with Crystal Eye Castle. Once again, this level is really iconic and I feel like we are at the point where it's insanely hard to rank these levels as they are all amazing. But you get to invade a castle full of cyclopses here, which is really cool. And this is the level that introduces those cyclopses and I really love these inside areas where we fight. And how can I forget about this? This one is very important. Once you get past the gate, <laughs> and troll home security is pretty similar. Here we get to invade another castle, but instead of cyclopses, we fight trolls, and they are even cooler. And just like some levels on this list, we start off in the more grassy areas, and as we go further, that's all gone, which is something I really like. And I like the water gate as well and these cannon shooting areas are pretty cool too. We are getting close to the end of the 3DS levels with Toadstool Terrace. This is another example of a simple level done really well. We meet Persephone once again and these areas are really cool. And I love how the level is based on going on top of giant mushrooms and small details like platforming on flowers make me enjoy this level even more. Next up it's Leaf Look Village. As you can tell this is really similar to Treetop Terrace and while I don't think it's better, this level is way too good to be anywhere lower than this. I love the jungle world in this game as the level design absolutely slaps and the best part about this level is that it's one of the most complex calendar levels when it comes to platforming and I think that's really great. And now we have Oil Spill Island. This place looks really cool and I love the theme of stopping water pollution and the music, ooh it's just so good. And this is the level that introduces trolls which is a pretty cool thing. Plus I love that you can explore the water with certain Skylanders which is something that should have happened a lot more. And honestly the only complaint I have is that frustrating fire gate but it doesn't affect the level that much so I don't really care. We have entered the top 10 of the 3DS levels with Tunnel of Love. This is the best level from the theme park world which is the best world in this game. The theme here is that we are going through a broken theme park ride which is such a cool concept and we spend a lot of time on this water slide and while the water physics are pretty confusing it's so much fun going at an insane speed so I don't really care. And the parts where we aren't on the slide are really good as well. At number 33 we have Whipwind Mountains. 
Gale Crack Ruins is my favorite world in all 3DS games as all three levels are amazing. And we continue where we left off in the previous level here and not only does this level look really cool but the platforming it's honestly insane. It's some of the best in the franchise and they found the perfect balance in between a challenge and fun and I love it. And the same can be said about Phantom Tide Rising. This is the ending level in Giants and it's also the best level in the game. What can I say, we are traveling from ship to ship in this giant vortex and then we get to fight Beard ship and that part is great as well. And it looks really cool and once again this level has some of the most challenging platforming in the series and I'm all for it. But with that... Another game is gone as it's time to say goodbye to Giants on the 3DS. The main problem with this game is that a lot of levels look the same and feel like filler levels, but it still had some absolute bangers. And here's my ranking and back to the levels. Yet another creative level is Above the Sea. This is a beach level and the level design is unreal and the best things about it are so many little details like platforming on beach umbrellas, beach poles are bounce pads, barrels are replaced with buckets and we are going around giant sand castles. Even the trolls have swimsuits on them which is something I never expected to say. This level is honestly amazing. At number 30 we have Gale Crack Castle. This is the best ending level in Skylanders which is really impressive for a 3DS level. We rescue Fargus here and Hector makes an appearance and not only is it the perfect way to end a game like this but it also has the best platforming in Skylanders in my opinion of course but I don't see how anyone who has played this level can disagree with me. And it's so good that originally it was my favorite 3DS level but after I thought about it I realized there are still some slightly better levels. And one of them is Sunblight Wood. This one just barely edges Gale Crack Castle for the best Gale Crack Ruins level and I absolutely love the level design as this type of graveyard in the woods looks really cool and even though the platforming isn't as good as the other two levels in this world it's still some of the best that Skylanders has to offer and my favorites are those time platforms that disappear and the ending of the level is pretty amazing as well. A level that's very similar is Spooky Woods. As you can tell this is another level in the woods and I always love levels designed like this. Swap zones are fun, level design is good, platforming is decent, it's just a simple but amazing level. We are almost done with the 3DS levels because the next level is Ashboro. The cave levels are pretty inconsistent as we had two outside the top 100 and now we have a level in the top 30. But what can I say, Ashboro is just so much fun and the level begins outside but we quickly enter the cave area and as I've already said the level design here is fucking amazing and exploring the mine is so great and I just absolutely love this level. We are now eliminating Swap Force on the 3DS with Samurai Springs. I never thought there were levels with a Japanese theme in Skylanders but my god am I glad they exist because I love all of them. But this one is the best by far. The goal here is to find the water dragon and we get everything I love in this level. Exploring villages, fun swap zones, platforming on lily pads and trees, lava areas and the ending is pretty cool too as we realize that the dragon is not real, it's just a Mabu controlling a robot and it's a great way to end this amazing level. But that's not the only thing ending as we are done with Swap Force. Even though it doesn't have the best 3DS level, it still came really close and this is in my opinion the best 3DS game and it has one of the strongest sets of levels in Skylanders and it's also the only 3DS game on this list that's better than the console version which is an amazing achievement and here is my ranking for this game. 
And the best 3DS level in Skylanders is Daystar Temple. This is the second jungle level and it's the only completely original level. Platforming is great, level design is great, I love these sticky heads that shoot at you and that's about it for this level. Except from the fact that you can turn into a sheep and play as them for like 30 seconds four times and this is one of the best things ever in Skylanders. You cannot imagine how happy I was when this happened for the first time and there is even a sheep elemental gate which leads to an area of even more sheep and because of that this level is the best 3DS level in Skylanders. And with that, Spyrus Adventure is eliminated with the best DS level and even though it's not as good as Swap Force, it's still a really good game with the best platforming we see in Skylanders and it's definitely better than Giants. And here's my ranking for this game and now only the console levels are left. At number 24 we have Treetops Terrace. Holy shit, this is the most nostalgic level ever for me. But nostalgia aside, it fucking slaps. The music is fire, the ending fight is great, the magic elemental gate is great as well. I love that we are going from one giant tree to another and I just feel like this entire level is amazing. Dark Water Cove is the first pirate level in Skylanders and it's one of the best ones. We have to find the twin spouts but on our way there our ship gets destroyed by the pirates and now we have to steal a ship from the pirates which is one of the coolest concepts for a level and Gurglefin makes that whole thing even better and the level is really good as well, I love that it has this dark look and it just fits really well and we get more water areas to explore and even a pirate village as well, it's really all done well. And Cutthroat Carnival is another amazing pirate level. This one has an equally good concept because our ship gets struck again but this time by lightning so we make an urgent landing in a pirate carnival to fix it and it's really fun to explore this level and the music is insanely good and Dreadbeard is back which is cool but once again we don't get to fight him which sucks however though this level introduces Skystones which is probably the best minigame in the history of Skylanders so of course it had to be high on this list. Just missing out on the top 20, we have Creepy Citadel. The undead levels are back after more than 140 spots, which is insane. And I feel like people sleep on Creepy Citadel way too much. It's such an amazing level with insane level design and maybe it's just me, but this castle is so cool. And I love that we have to first do a couple puzzles in order to enter it. And I also love that it's divided with this cool looking swamp area and lastly, the boss fight is genuinely difficult which is something this game is missing a lot so that's another great thing about this level. The best undead level is Crawling Catacombs. This is also the scariest level as when I was younger this was really terrifying and to this day I still hate spiders because of this level but the level is so good and it's another insanely underrated one. The level design is great and even though I hate them I also kinda love the spider enemies and the best part is when you are in the dark and I love the fact that you can see better with fire skylanders and it's details like that that make levels even better. A level from imaginators that doesn't get enough credit is Scholarville. This is another war themed level where we have to save this town I guess and it's full of explosives and cannonballs and stuff like that and it's really fun. And yes the Doomlander fight is bad but it's not at the end of the level, instead the ending is really really good because we go into the sewers which are great and we fight the evil sea monster which is also a great boss fight, even though the name is fucking horrible. We are starting the top 5 of Trap Team with Williken Workshop. 
Cass's old factory gets taken over by Crankcase and now we gotta get it back and again we have another really fun factory and it's one of the coolest ones but I feel like the beginning of the level outside is even better and I love that it's night time and the way this level looks but of course the best part is that amazing Crankcase boss fight at the end of the level. Next up we have Cursed Sticky Temple. First of all, the graphics here are insane and the level design is on point. The first part is pretty solid, but the second part is where it's at. You travel across a giant rock dragon, which is pretty cool, and I have to say that these temple areas are so good, and that ending fight is pretty great as well. Do I think this level could have been better without those weird blocks to deal damage, but you can imagine how good it is is when even I think it's in the top 20 even though it costs an insane amount of money. And we are finally back in superchargers with the cloud breathers crag. I'll admit the level is longer than I would like it to be but the graphics and music here are breathtaking and you won't believe this but my favorite part of this level are the vehicle sections. It may not be the vehicles themselves, but the set pieces are amazing. From driving on top of flying ships to the back of a dragon with the land vehicle, or then flying above the dragon to defend him, and as for the water star, it's nothing special and neither are the gong puzzles, but even with them, this level is absolutely fantastic. Another game we haven't mentioned in a while is Swap Force and we have Rampant Ruins. As you know, I love Archeans, so a level themed around Archean Ruins was always gonna be high on this list. And you know what else I love? Monkeys, and this level has a giant stone monkey, and I love the inclusion of Evil Eyes Glumshanks, as I think he's a pretty cool villain, and to top it all off, this is a short swap force level. Do I need to say anything else? Continuing with Trap Team, we have Telescope Towers. What I always loved about this level is that it feels like people who made it were on drugs because you have stuff like flying whales or these cool obstacles and these areas are also pretty amusing as well. And even though we have another bad quest, this level has the two coolest villains that aren't Doom Raiders in Peñata and Hoodsicle. And this may come as a shock, but I actually like the Dreamcatcher fight. Like sure it's nothing insane but it's miles better than a lot of shit we have talked about and it's the easiest Doom Raider apart from the Gulper but sometimes it's nice to have a break from all the challenge. Continuing with Trap Team it's Chef Zeppelin. Again, this level has such a cool concept as we are trying to take over Chef Pepper Jack's flying ship, which is basically just a giant kitchen, which leads us to some pretty cool stuff like food instead of spinning blades, or the fire elemental gate where we cook bread, or a bunch of pans, cookers and cutlery, and it's all made even better with yet another amazing boss fight against Chef Pepper Jack, but sadly, this level has a really long turret section at the start, which stops it from being in the top 10, but top 15 is still an amazing achievement. And the best level from Superchargers is Gadfly Glades. The graphics are gorgeous, the music is great, and it's so cool to get shrunk. And the enemies and obstacles are great as we are fighting spiders and bees and mushrooms and flowers are the platforms we jump on. The water star is fun and I really like the air star where we destroy fountains and the air star is the weakest one but again I like that we have the girl trying to stomp us and overall it's such a creative level and it's a shame that it couldn't get to the top 10 but with that we are done with superchargers and I am not surprised that this is the first console game to go out. Though I will say it's not the worst one and I love most of the level themes and feel like they were sadly ruined because of the vehicles but we still got some amazing levels so yeah, here's my ranking and let's continue. Just missing out on the top 10 we have Leviathan Lagoon. 
I love this level so much because I have a lot of amazing memories in it and I'm glad to say that this is the best pirate level in Skylanders as it has everything you want in a level. The music is amazing, there is so much exploring here especially because of the water gimmick and my favorite thing here is that you can get eaten by the leviathan and you can even find a legendary treasure in its mouth and the ending is amazing as we get eaten again but this time it leads to a great boss fight which is also the first boss fight in Skylanders and yeah that's about it but with this level done we have now entered the absolute best of the best so yeah let's start with the top 10 at number 10 it's Tower of Time by far the best level in Swap Force. It experiments a lot, but I feel like it does everything right. The time-stopping puzzles are surprisingly fun, and you can stop time to easily defeat enemies, but then they add the time spell punk so you don't abuse the time-stopping and to be annoying when you're doing a puzzle. The graphics are beautiful, the area inside the clock is great, and of course it introduces Clock, who is a really cool character, and we fight him both during the level and at the end of the level, and his boss fight is really good, and definitely the best in Swap Force. But with that, we are done with Swap Force. There are some solid levels in this game, but coming after Giants, I think it's a huge disappointment. And here's my ranking, and yeah, back to the video. At number 9, it's Chompy Mountain. I think everybody can agree that this is an amazing level. It looks beautiful, both the outside area and the inside of the mountain are really fun and we meet Chompy Mage again and we first confront him during the level and then at the end of the level and the boss fight is really good and really hard as well and honestly the only thing I dislike is that sheep creep quest at the beginning but apart from that it's almost perfect. We have only now entered the top 5 of Giants with Autogyro Adventure. I've already said multiple times that I think Archeans are really cool and in my opinion this is the best Archean level in Skylanders. I just love exploring these cool looking areas in this giant cave that are filled with some of the toughest enemies you will fight in Skylanders as you fight the likes of Juggernauts and Duelists in some really small areas as well, but the thing that makes this level even better is the Autogyro itself. It's so much fun flying around this area and the thing that's insane to me is that the best vehicle section in a Skylanders level isn't even in the game that focuses on vehicles. At number 7 we have Chaos's Castle. This is my favorite level based around Chaos as this is Chaos's home and we have to get into the castle to find him and it's such a solid level and the music is really good and we start off outside as we try to find the entrance to the castle and that underground area is pretty cool as well but obviously the best part is the castle as it looks really cool from the inside and we we have to find the two switches at the end of split paths and finally they are done well and we get another really fun arena battle at the end of the level. The best imaginators level is Stumpin Wampa Islands. If you know me, you know that I'm a huge Crash Bandicoot fan, so I was always gonna love something like this. And because I'm a Crash fan, I can also see some really cool references here, like the moving blocks from Crash 1, or the villagers, or these plant enemies from Crash 2. And even small tiny Adingodile statues are here, which is really cool. And the graphics are amazing, and the level is built like a Crash level, with all the the boxes and wampa fruits replacing the coins and we have another great boss fight against fake crash to end the level and the only thing i dislike 
is the cortex section but the crash part more than makes up for it and with that Imaginators is out of the ranking and I still think this is a bad game with a bunch of bad levels and even the ones that are good they are only expansion packs most of the story levels are horrible but yeah goodbye to Imaginators Stone Town is the best level in Spire's adventure and I've always felt like it shows the best of what the game has to offer. The music is once again fantastic and there is a lot of exploration here because of the big structure of this level and all the water areas. And the level looks really cool as we are on our way to find the earth elemental source. And even the boss fight against the stone monster is good, which is something that isn't seen often in this game. And I feel like the only mistake here is that the town area at the end had a lot of potential and I I wish we were there for longer, but it's such an amazing level that it doesn't really even matter. But now, the game that started it all is out of this ranking, having reached the top 5. And it was always gonna have bad levels, because it's the game with the most levels, but the good definitely outshines the bad. And it has aged surprisingly well, and it's still my favorite game of all time. Here's my ranking for this game, let's continue. Villikin Village is one of those rare levels that I think every single Skylanders fan thinks is in the top 10. It's simply that good. You visit a village full of these dolls and there are two worlds, one where everything is alive and the other one where everything is dead. And you can switch between them and it's so much fun fun and the music here is my favorite soundtrack for a level ever and it's not an easy level either it can be pretty challenging at times but it's never too hard and of course this is the level that introduces chompy mage and once again his boss fight is really good and it's pretty cool that both levels with chompy mage ended up in the top 10. Drill X's Big Rig is another amazing giants level. We have had a lot of factory levels on this list, but none of them are quite as good as this one. The level design here is perfect and I honestly love the way it looks, even though it's all grey. And the music fits this level so well. And again, it isn't an easy level, but the highlight of this level is the well-known singing drill. I don't know who came up with this idea, but it's so cool and the boss fight is amazing as well and one of the best in the entire franchise. Phoenix Sanctuary is the best level from Trap Team. This is another level that I think all Skylanders fans think it's in the top 10. And I feel like everything here is perfect. It looks beautiful and there is so much to explore here. Like this is one of the most open levels in Skylanders and it's done a lot better than Griffin's Park Observatory. Plus, there are none of those annoying quests and the part near the end where we avoid giant eggs is great as well. And we have another great arena battle to top it all off. 
and we are officially done with Trap Team. One of the better Skylander games for sure and I must say it has a really strong set of levels with there only being a couple of bad levels but the rest are pretty fun and it came really close to having the best level in the franchise but that title belongs to another level. Here's how I'd rank the levels in this game and let's see the best Skylanders level of all time. That's right, I think that Rumble Town from Skylanders Giants is the best Skylanders level of all time. Absolutely everything here is perfect. The music is amazing, it offers a lot of exploration and it's really fun exploring this small town. It even has one of my favorite elemental gates. But obviously, my favorite thing here is that this level introduces Brock, who is one of my favorite NPCs. He's pretty funny and I love that part where he destroys our bridge and we fall down to a completely new area and try to find our way back up. And with Brock, it also introduces the arena battles and I love them. Having said that, we are done with the ranking. It honestly feels insane that I've gotten to this point and if you watch the entire video, I don't know why you did that, but I really do hope you enjoyed this. And also, here's my ranking for the levels in Giants, if anyone is interested. And as for my channel in the future, I'm honestly not sure what's next, and I cannot promise anything for now, but I will try to upload as much as possible. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Happy 10th anniversary of Skylanders and goodbye.